All right, I'm back now. I have new ink and actually I went with original OEM inks for this uh, printer, which are the T048s. These are actually refillable. You can actually modify them to be refilled. And I have a video that covers that earlier in my channel. So let's go ahead and start it up. I actually replaced them. I still could not get the nozzles cleaned by doing regular cleaning cycles. So what I decided to do was to do another soak over paper towels with Windex and I left them sit overnight. Now that can be dangerous as in some cases because the head is actually contacting a wet surface it can cause a siphoning effect and it can literally draw all the ink out of your carts. So it's, it's a dangerous thing to do but in this case it worked pretty well. Um, I did not drain my inks as far as I can tell. You can see there's a little bit of a blue area here and there's I noticed there was a yellow area on this end over here and that is typical as the channels are separated by color. So let's go ahead and do a nozzle check. I've already done one cleaning cycle but I have yet to do a nozzle check. I did the cleaning cycle and I turned it off and let it rest because when I turned it on initially this morning I still had a bad nozzle check. So let's go ahead and cross her fingers and see if this did the trick. And let's go ahead and uh, let me show you what actually happens. So there's a paper feeding and we'll go ahead and take a look at oh glory glory hallelujah we have what appears to be a perfect nozzle check awesome okay so now now that I've achieved that and this is this was the primary goal in reviving this printer you got to get a perfect nozzle check I still did not have a perfect nozzle check I would have to revert or resort to a physical forcing although carefully forcing of cleaning fluid through the ink stems now the ink stems are located inside the carriage itself and it's what enters the vent or the exit port of your cartridge ink is drawn through that ink stem so if you can get a syringe with the proper diameter rubber tubing and carefully after you extract all of the air out of the syringe you would insert that rubber tubing onto the ink step and then very carefully pump in cleaning fluid of course you need to do it with the carriage sitting in this position here and you should have plenty of paper towels to catch that windex that's going to be pouring out of your print head literally and you would then treat each one of your heads until you see nothing but blue windex coming out of the bottom of the head onto the paper towel it would be readily visible you would repeat that changing the toweling until you're getting nothing but blue windex coming out at that point you would return the carriage to the right or to the center position here insert all of your carts back into the carriage of course the printer will be off because you've powered it off you did the turn on and then pull the plug out of the wall trick so you're going to go ahead and put the plug back into the wall, turn the printer back on, and then have it go through the dance that it will do. And when it returns back to its position, you're going to go ahead and run one head clean. And that will prime those ink stems. It might take a couple of head cleans to fully prime the head again. And at that point, then you would retest it by performing another nozzle check and crossing your fingers you should be able to get a perfect one such as you see here now all is not perfect 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 I see a slight deviation of some of the little lines here but that's really so insignificant at this point so as actually not to matter much okay so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna recycle this piece of paper and then we're gonna do a head alignment and this head alignment will tell us one thing if that encoding strip that I showed you in the earlier video located right here will need cleaning or not. If it does, we will go ahead and perform that. If it does not, I'll go ahead and show you with a dry Q-tip what needs to be done in order for you to achieve that. They're, they sell special little foam tip little sticks 
They're like cleaning sticks for electronic purposes. They use them to clean old VCR heads. They're still available. I get them from eBay, but they come from overseas from the Orient, and it takes like three weeks for them to arrive. But I, I, I get them, and um, I'm waiting for a new order, in fact, at this time. They're nice because they have a little flat applicator head. You apply the cleaning fluid. In this case, it's just alcohol, and you just go across, across the surface all the way to the left, all the way to the right. And in order to reach the right, you have to move the head to this position here. And it'll, that'll give you access to the other end of it. And then you do the same thing on the rear portion of it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll do the head alignment. And that's located here in the setup window. It says print head alignment, load plain paper, letter size paper. And we're gonna proceed. And it will do the head alignment. Basically, it's going to print a bunch of little squares. And you're looking for the one that has no lines on it. No vertical lines. I already see that we're going to have problems. Because I see some banding. But we will see. We're going to look for the number or position that has the least amount of banding. And then that's the number that we will enter into the LCD. You can do this either on the printer itself by using the LCD screen or through the printer driver in the actual computer that you may have this printer installed in. I hope it's visible what the printer is actually laying down. You can see it as a series of vertical bands and you, we're looking for the one that's the cleanest, the one with the least amount of lines. What you're doing is eliminating the possibility of having banding when you're printing bidirectionally. Bidirectional printing is great because you can print twice as fast. In other words, a, a photo that would take 10 minutes will only take around 5 because you're printing in both directions of the head travel and thus you're eliminating or saving half the total time. Sometimes you have to perform this step two times. You do the preliminary alignment and then do a secondary alignment and that should solve the problem. A lot of people experience banding on their prints and it's not due to missing nozzles it's usually caused by a misaligned printhead. Some printers you're looking for the least grainy or granular looking uh, block. In this case we're just looking for the smoothest one. So we're going to go ahead and proceed to examine this and you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to do it by eye, so trust me when I make my choices. So in this case, we're going to choose 7 for the first position, 7 for the second position, and 7 again, and looks like 6. So we're going to go ahead and enter 7, 7, 7, and 6. All right. You might be able to see here on the LCD screen that I have four positions to adjust. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the right button and then using the up and down arrows I'm going to choose 7 and then OK. Then go down to the next position 7, OK. This one I believe was also 7 and then 6 if I'm not mistaken. And what you want is to reach a point where they're all around number five. So we'll go ahead and uh, finish. And we'll do a comp another realignment. We'll do a secondary one. And we'll see where we are at. So let's go ahead and do repeat this process again. And I will not make you watch this all over again. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the camera off and then come back as soon as it's done.
Okay, we have a few more seconds until this ends. Remember that the position of the printhead is dictated by the ability of that encoding strip to tell the sensor that reads it exactly where the head is located. So this is very important. This will align the printhead, but if you run into a problem with a printer that is unalignable, you cannot align it. Chances are your encoding strip is dirty. And that's not something you know, rare, that will occur. Remember, printing borderless sends a lot of overspray. These printers do not have an aspirating system, so the overspray just, it's like a little cloud inside the printer, and it will deposit itself over anything it can conveniently land on. And if it lands on that encoding strip, then you're in trouble. It just requires a wipe with a Q-tip or one of those special applicators. And remember just to use something that's not gonna leave a residue like alcohol or even distilled water. All right, so we're gonna go through this again. I'm gonna go ahead and read the numbers and see where we're at. Number one position, the best one is still number seven, and I would say the second one to be six, and then five, and then seven. So seven, six, five, seven. And this one stays the same. And we'll leave it at that for now. So we're going to go ahead, OK, and finish. Print alignment is complete. OK, at this point, we're basically done. If this was a printer you got off the heap and you were trying to revive it, then you are ready and good to go. The only thing I'm going to be doing next, I'm going to do a couple of more videos. I'm going to go ahead and do some internal cleaning, just going over the various steps that you need to do to clean the interior without damaging. Then we're going to go ahead and replace that silly pouch and install a proper bottle to collect all our waste ink. All right, so we'll see you in the next video. Happy printing. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.